hey, welcome. Uh, today we are doing an Ask a Pastor that's a little off of what has become our normal format. So I'm joined by Josiah. Josiah, hey. welcome. Thanks. Good to be together. And we wanted to readdress the coronavirus. And actually, when we're recording this, there are a lot of things that could change between now and then. So give us a little grace if what we say doesn't <laughs> correspond with modern uh, current news. Having said that, though, uh, even what we said last week when the last Ask a Pastor dropped uh, is almost outdated because this story is moving so quickly. There are so many developments that are happening with this. And what we wanted to do today, more than trying to assess where this is going, where it's been, is we wanted to talk about the spiritual journey when facing a national crisis. And so, Josiah, why don't you first just, just speak to us about what do we do when we find ourselves in a situation that's well beyond our control that is concerning and disconcerting? Yeah, thanks, Kurt. I mean, this is the kind of situation where so many of us are saying, I don't know that I've ever experienced something quite like this in terms of being such a broad, um, just a, a global sort of pandemic that's causing a lot of anxiety and fear. And so for me as a follower of Christ, really what I'm, what I'm doing and what I'm uh, seeking to encourage other people in at this time is looking to God's word for a sense of grounding about who he is uh, for us, who he is in the world, and these kind of times. And uh, yeah, I'm finding a lot of comfort in the promises in God's word and just the reality that uh, none of this is a surprise to him. You know, uh, as I was looking at text this morning, one that really was on my mind was Psalm 139, where David, he talks about how all of our, our time is in his hands, how God knew us before we were even born. And uh, verse 16 in particular of that uh, chapter 139 of uh, the book of Psalms, your eyes saw my unformed body, all the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. Uh, to me, it brings me real comfort to know that even as scary as this is, it's, it's not a surprise to God for any one of us in our lives. And uh, I think that there's, you know, so much truth to be said about the hope that a believer, someone who's come to, to a faith and understanding of who Jesus is for us and the life that we have in him, hope that lasts forever, uh, certainly can be a comfort to us in times like this. That's great. Those are really good words just to say this doesn't surprise God and, and there's a hope beyond. As I've been thinking about this, there's a couple things that really jump at me. One is, um, in our Western society, we are so used to not facing death that whenever death comes anywhere close to us, it seems that we really um, almost freak out by it. And, mm -hmm. and that's understandable. I don't certainly want to face death. Mm -hmm. um, but I think if, if as a Christian, we really do have an assurance of life beyond this life and that that's our real life, our better life, then, then what facing death should remind us of is that, is that this world isn't our home. And I think sometimes I forget that. I can start to think, no, this world is my home and I should be able to have all of my comfort, everything that I want here and now, rather than being able to say this um, virus or an unexpected tragedy in my life that's apart from this, whatever it is, hopefully reminds me spiritually that, 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 that I wasn't just created for here and now. And, and that's not as comforting maybe as, as saying, hey, God holds this, and, and I think both are true, but, but I find that to be a helpful rubric in a moment like this, just to mm. say, say part of the, the pain in the world is reminding us that this world isn't everything. And, and I think you mm. see this in Luke 13, where Jesus was talking and there was a tower that fell and, and some people said, you know, who, who caused this? And she said, nobody, but this is so you'll know basically yeah. that, that there's more um, than, than this world. Um, uh, that's well said. I, I think that in times like this, certainly I, I wish this never happened. I wish mm -hmm. this, isn't, this wasn't uh, the reality that we're facing right now. But I also feel uh, a sense of confidence in the fact that, you know, God isn't surprised by this and he can use it in a way that would turn people's hearts toward him in a way that sometimes we can distract ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, we live in a pretty comfortable world uh, here in Wexford, uh, in the Pittsburgh region. We can distract ourselves with uh, the comforts of life that we can acquire by our own doing and just uh, the, the things that our society here in the United States would provide us as everyday 
um, sort of uh, expectations of the way that life is going to unfold. And when we face a situation like this, it reminds us that for each and every one of us, our, our time on earth is finite, our days are fragile, and sooner or later we're all going to be faced with the questions of eternity. Um, we're all going to be faced with the questions of uh, where, how we will process, um, you know, life and death. Mm -hmm. And that's really uh, what this kind of moment can do for each and every one of us. And, you know, a verse that was kind of on my mind as I was thinking about this is in Matthew chapter 6, uh, Jesus teaching in the Sermon on the Mount in verses 26 and 27. You know, this is talking about God's worldly provision, but look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father provides for them. And then Jesus later there in Matthew 6, he says, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And it was really on my mind as I read that, that this is an opportunity for each of us to look to God as our provider in the here and now. But even more than that, those of us who have come to God and said, God, there's nothing I can bring to the table other than empty hands and recognizing that you are my provider. I need your grace. I need your provision in an ultimate way through what Jesus Christ has done for me on the cross. Mm -hmm. When we come to God and we put our hope in him in that way, oh man, I love this verse from Romans chapter 8. Um, Paul, the apostle, talks about how if we've put our trust in Christ and Jesus went so far to lay down his life on the cross to save us, how much more can we know that he will never abandon us and he'll never let us down, whatever we go through? Uh, the words of the apostle Paul, what shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? In verse 35, he says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship, persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? And then 37 to 39, In all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. I'm convinced that neither death nor life nor angels nor demons, height nor depth nor anything in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God that's in Christ Jesus. Uh, what a hope that is for each and every one of us who look to Jesus in faith to know that the hope we have in him is not just for this life. It certainly gives us hope in this life, but it lasts for all of eternity because we know that all of our time is in his hands. He'll sustain us through his Holy Spirit who lives inside of us. So that, that's, that's really helpful. What would you say to somebody to not just say, okay, I've got my hope. I take care of myself, take care of my family, but how does somebody live with a sense of mission in a moment like this? If Again, if we're Christ followers, yes. it means that you're called not just to say, I take care of myself and get to heaven one day, yeah. but I'm to live with a sense of mission and purpose in this world. Mm -hmm. What's unique about this situation that would um, spur missional living? Yeah, I think what is... I want to say this with sensitivity because this is such a difficult thing. And again, I wish this was not happening. Mm -hmm. That said, what an opportunity that followers of Jesus Christ right now have to live as witnesses to who he is in our world. Because the fact of the matter is the people that we're interacting with are very anxious. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of fear. And if we can have a presence of calm and confidence because our hope is in the Lord, mm -hmm. that says something about uh, the authenticity of our faith. And not just uh, the power of positive thinking, but the power of the gospel and the Holy Spirit inside of us to quiet a heart. Mm -hmm. But also we're presented with this opportunity to be people who show that we are about more than just ourselves. Mm -hmm. We are a people who value reaching out and caring for those who are in need, those who are sick, those who are in uh, situations of, impo of impoverishment, whatever that might be. And so I know that here at Orchard Hill right now, we are spending time today uh, Friday the 13th of March, thinking critically about how we can engage some of those needs mm -hmm. um, here in our church, certainly, but also in the community around us. Mm -hmm. um, how can we care for people in response to the way that God has cared for us? Mm -hmm. It's a powerful opportunity before us. Yeah, it, it is. And, and as a church, we're hoping to um, not just say, how do we make it through this time, but also how do we care for certainly those within the church family and even beyond that, that we have an opportunity to. Here's what what I would say too about that. I think it's, if we're not intentional, it's really easy to forget about that in a time of crisis and to say, my only responsibility is to hunker down and take care of myself. Um, I was talking with my uh, second son who's away at college and he just found out that his college was going to close down for the rest of the year and do online classes. 
And we were talking about how he was going to transition home and how he would get there. And he said, you know, I have it good. He said, I know that I'm coming home to a house. I have brothers. I have parents. I have a place to go. I have food, he said. But I know there's some kids who are here at my school who don't have those things to go home to. And he said, maybe I'll invite a couple of them home with me and, they, and you know, we can take care of them. And, and I have to be honest, my initial reaction was not, that's awesome, bring home a bunch of college students uh, and we'll take care of them. But then as soon as I thought about it, I thought, he is, he is pointing the way for me to say, how do I say I can live with a bigger perspective than just mm. taking care of myself? And, and, and I think it requires us to ask that question and to think intentionally um, about that rather than just saying, oh, yeah, I, you know, I'm going to take care of, of course, my son comes home and of course I take care of him. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so I, I, I think my point to that is just to say, to even ask that question in the midst of this, not just how do I take care of myself, but how do I extend myself even in this time. And, and one of the things that, that you'll hear me say if you listen to the online services during this time is that, is that you know, as a church, it's easy to think that a church is defined by its gatherings. But a church is really the people of God in a community tied together by theology, by mission, saying how do we live out the, the, the purposes of God in our community in the era in which we're, we're here. And this is one of those moments, as you said, just to say, if I live without fear, if I live with a sense of purpose, that I'm actually um, living out God's purposes, maybe more fully than going to a bunch of church gatherings mm. would have me do, or a bunch of Bible studies would in, a, in another flow of time. Yes, and something that I really love about our church is that we're a place where people at any place in their journey of faith can come and they can explore who God is and mm -hmm. take steps closer to knowing him, having a relationship with God through faith in Christ. But we also want to be a place where people can be grown in their faith. They can grow through learning opportunities and participating in community and also a place where we can really equip people to live out their faith in the community and their relationships at work, at home, in their neighborhood, wherever. Like we were talking about with that sort of missional mindset. And here, here at Orchard Hill, I know something that is on our minds is how can we kind of lead the way in terms of discipling, equipping, and sending out through online mm -hmm. engagement opportunities. And so I want to encourage you, keep an eye on the Orchard Hill Church website and also onto your email. We'll have different opportunities for kids, for youth, even for women, men, and adults of all different uh, stages of uh, development in Christian faith to be able to kind of connect in community online and learn and grow and be equipped to engage the needs around us. So keep an eye out for that information. So we were talking before this about the danger of saying anything predictive in these moments. So where do you think this is going? <laughs> and uh, let me just put you on the spot oh, and ask you, where, like, 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 what can we expect yeah. moving forward? And how does that expectation play into our faith. Yeah, I liked your, your uh, statement, not to say anything that is deletable yeah. moving forward. But uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, where we, where we stand on Friday, March 13th, I think that we'd be pretty surprised. <laughs> to get that in again. Yes. Your, your second time stamp. Hey, I'm covering myself. <laughs> <laughs> where we stand now, I'd be pretty surprised if we don't see some cases locally here pretty soon. I think that what we're seeking right now is wisdom and understanding on how we can um, both protect people in terms of the, the choices that they would make with their individual health, but also uh, make the most of the opportunities we have to really be that kind of presence where we can care for people who are in need. I think that's a tricky situation um, where we're really gaining understanding, not just from uh, media, but from people who are gifted, called and equipped and, you know, positioned in government at all levels to be able to provide some expert insight on those things. So uh, I'm really grateful for the people we have in leadership here at the church on our staff and also our board. Uh, we have some expert medical personnel and um, just people who God has gifted with wisdom and helping us make those kind of decisions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, you know, I would, uh, I would echo all of that. I'd also say um, we don't know where something like this goes. Certainly the, the health piece of it is big. It also seems to me on Friday the 13th, since we timestamp this, uh, <laughs> that, that there will be some significant economic implications, uh, just as people walk through a season of maybe trying not to spend and some people might lose their jobs just by the lack of travel alone, that will cause people to lose income, which means they'll spend less, which means other people lose, lose income. And so it's really an opportunity to trust God on that front as well, uh, just to say, 
uh, my life, and, and you read the verses earlier that correspond to some of this, but my life isn't just about how much I have or don't have. And to practice generosity, you know, if you've been in the stock market, which most people are, obviously your money's gone down and, you know, you push out your, your potential retirement date and all of those things. And, and again, it's really easy to think that, that that's our security rather than saying my security is ultimately in Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting, again, just in my house, I was uh, talking about the, the stock market and one of my sons was sitting there, I was telling Faith how much money we thought we had lost and, and everything. And when I first said the number, I, I watched my one son just kind of be like, whoa, what in the world? And um, like, how will we live? And, and it was a really great moment to be able to say, well, one, you know, we made that much money in the last year or two on the stock market. So it's not like we really lost all of that, at least at this point. But more than that, to, to say, our confidence isn't in that number. It's not in this system. It's in something more. Yes, I want to be prudent. I want to take care of it. I want to be wise. But but to 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 be able to say that that isn't where my real security is, hopefully, mm. um, and 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 say that to to one of my sons, um, I think is an important thing to be able to model. Because sometimes what happens in these moments, I think, is 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 we get caught up in those numbers and we feel like, wow, you know, my, my plan to retire at X number of years or my mm -hmm. hopes have all changed. Um, and to know that our world is changing, but, but it's in serving a God that isn't changing that, that we actually have our, our real security. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's well said. And I just want to encourage you, if you're listening to this and there's any way we can support you through the ministries of Orchard Hill Church, reach out to us online through the website. You can submit a prayer request or also uh, any need you might have through our Elios ministry, we'd be glad to connect with you. Also, if you'd like to uh, have some care from one of our ministry staff, you can connect with us over email, and we'd be happy to chat with you over Zoom or Skype. Anyway, uh, we can serve you. We are available, and we're, we're eager to support the church throughout this season. So with that said, um, we are going to call this a wrap. Um, we certainly will be praying for those in our community and uh, look forward to seeing other updates online. Thanks and have a great day.